So the last lesson today is we're going to be solving problems with exponential and log functions. Uh, so solving log problems, there are many applications of logarithmic problems. Uh, this include the Richter scale, which measures the intensity of the earthquakes, the pH scale for measuring the acid content of the substance, which you guys did in chem, and the decibel scale for measuring various sound levels, which you guys may have done in physics. Log, log scales are used to simplify these phenomenons, which vary by a wide range of values, okay? So the first example we're going to look at is logs and earthquakes. So the Richter scale was to compare the intensities of earthquakes. Uh, the amount of energy released in an earthquake is, a very, is very large. So to avoid using large numbers, a logarithmic scale is used to compare the intensities. So we have M, which is the Richter scale number. Uh, is equal to log of I, which is the intensity of the earthquake being measured, divided by IO, which is the intensity of a reference earthquake. So on the Richter scale, the energy of the earthquake increases by powers of 10 in relation to the Richter magnitude number. So the earthquake of magnitude 2 is actually 10 times more intense than an earthquake of magnitude of 1. Okay? So earthquakes... Below a magnitude of four usually cause no damage. Earthquakes of a magnitude of six are strong and earthquakes of a magnitude of seven or higher typically cause major damage. So the first example we're gonna look at is an earthquake of magnitude 7.5 on the Richter scale, struck Guatemala in 1976. In 1993, an earthquake of magnitude 6.4 struck Maharashtra, India, compare the intensities of the two earthquakes and how much more intense was the Guatemalan earthquake? Give me two seconds, I just have to do something very quickly. Okay, so we're going to have a few let statements. So we're going to let IG represent the Guatemala earthquake. And we're going to let IM represent the Mahar earthquake. So now what we're going to do is we are going to try to find uh, how much more intense the Guatemalan earthquake was in comparison to the one in India, okay? So we're going to use our formula. So we're going to have M is equal to log of I over IO. M is equal to log the reference earthquake. And the first one is IG, which is the Guatemala over IO, and then we know the Richter scale number for Guatemala was 7.5, so 7.5 is equal to log base 10, because we always assume it's a base of 10, of IG over IO. Now to get rid of the logs, we're just gonna use our basic laws of logarithms. So this becomes 10 to the power of 7.5, is equal to IG over IO, which means IG is equal to IO 
times 10 to the 7.5, okay? We are not done yet because we have to do the same thing with the Mahar earthquake. So it's the same idea. We're going to do m is equal to log of i m over i o. We know the Richter scale number was 6.4 is equal to log 10 of i m over i o. And then all we're doing is the same thing we did for the Guatemala earthquake. So we have 10 to the 6.4 is equal to i m over i o. I m is equal to I o times 10 to the 6.4. So now what we need to do is take the ratio, okay, to compare how much more intense was the Guatemalan earthquake in comparison to the one in India. So we are going to take the ratio of I g over I o. I m, which is equal to I o times 10 to the 7.5 divided by I o times 10 to the 6.4. The I o's cancel out. So we're left with 10 to the 7.5 divided by 10 to the 6.4, which means we're just subtracting our exponents. And we get 10 to the power of 1.1 which is the same thing as saying approximately 12.6. So therefore, the Guatemala earthquake was 12.6 times more intense. Again, all we're doing is using the rules that we learned from log, and that's all that we're basically doing with this question. Okay, so is everybody good so far? This lesson shouldn't be too long, so we should be done pretty, pretty quickly. All right, so now we're going to logs and sound, which is what you guys are probably doing in physics. Uh, so we know that sounds, loudness of any sounds is measured the loudness of any sound is measured relative to the loudness of a sound at the threshold of the hearing. Uh, sound levels at the, at the softest that can be heard with an intensity of IO is equal to 10 to the negative 12 uh, W per M squared given the measure of loudness of zero decibels. So we have our equation here. L is equal to 10 log I divided by IO. So it's similar to the Richter scale, except you have a 10 in front of the log this time. So I is the intensity of the sound being measured. I O is the intensity of the sound at the threshold of hearing. And L is the loudness, uh, is the loudness measured in decibels. So constant exposure to sound levels of 85 decibels during a 35 hour work week will eventually cause damage to most ears. 120 decibels is the average rock concert and sounds of 130 decibels after 75 seconds, you are at risk of suffering permanent damage to your hearing. So that's if you're literally beside a plane uh, as it's about to take off when you're outside of it. So example two is how many more times intense is the sound at a rock concert than the sound of a normal conversation? So again, we're going to do the exact same thing we did for question one. We're going to put our let statements. So we're going to let IR be the concert. And we're going to let IC be the convo. 
Okay, so we're gonna start off with I R first. So you have L is equal to 10 log of I R over I O. And again, we're just doing the same thing as before. So the rock constant is 120 is equal to 10 log of I R divided by I O. Divide both sides by 10. We get 12 is equal to log of I R over I O. And again, we're just repeating the exact same thing we did from the previous question. So we get 10 to the 12 is equal to I R over I O and I R is equal to I O times 10 to the 12. So that is our expression for the rock concert. And now we have to come up with an expression for our regular conversation. So we have L. I was going to put that again, my apologies. L is equal to 10 log of IC over IO. We know the decibels for a conversation is 60. So 60 is equal to 10 log of IC over IO. Divide both sides by 10. We get 6 is equal to log of IC over IO. Remember when we don't have a base, we automatically assume 10. And then using what we learned in the first lesson, uh, we can rearrange this to isolate for IO. So we get 10 to the 6 is equal to IC over IO. And we get IC is equal to IO times 10 to the 6. And now, just like the first question, we are just going to take the, the uh, ratio between both of them. So we're going to divide the rock concert by the conversation to see how much more intense the rock concert is opposed to the conversation. So you get IR divided by IC, which is equal to IO times 10 to the 12 over IO times 10 to the 6. So the IOs cancel out. We're left with 10 to the 12 over 10 to the 6. And because we are dividing exponents with the same base, we just subtract the exponents. So 12 minus 6 gives us 6. So we get 10 to the 6, which is equal to 1 million. Which means the concert is 1 million times more intense. So like I said, as you can see, this is pretty, I guess, easy so far. Uh, there's no real trick uh, to doing these questions. Uh, all we're doing is using the formulas, okay? And then all we have is one more set of examples, and I'm going to take up page 486, number 11, because someone asked me to do it. So... How many of you guys know this formula already from chemistry? Does, any, does anybody recognize the pH formula? Yeah, so I'm assuming most of you have done this already. So basically, if you have a pH of 7, it's considered to be neutral. If it's less than seven, then you're more acidic. If it's higher than seven, then it's more of a base. So soapy, soapy water, bleaches, or baking soda are some examples of being a base. 
So example three, we want to calculate the pH of a liquid with a hydrogen ion concentration of 8.7 times 10 to the negative six moles per liter. So we have our formula pH is equal to negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, which is equal to negative log of Eight point seven times ten to the negative six, and if someone does that on their calculator, what is negative log of eight point seven times ten to the negative six? Which means the pH is approximately five, okay? So that means the pH is approximately five, which means it's more on the acidic side of things. And then the last question we have is the pH of a fruit juice is 3.10. What is the hydrogen ion concentration of the fruit juice? So we're going to use our expression again. pH is equal to negative log of H plus. We know our pH is 3.1, which is equal to negative log of H plus. So just by using our log rules, we're just going to rearrange. So first, we're going to divide by negative 1. So that cancels out the negative. So we get negative 3.10 is equal to log of the hydrogen ion concentration. And then from basic log rules from the first few lessons, we get 10 to the negative 3.10 is equal to H plus. <clears throat> and when we do that on our calculator, what is the concentration of the hydrogen ion? It is approximately 7.9 times 10 to the negative 4, okay? Or if you want it in decimals, 0 0.00079. <clears throat> Which means that the hydrogen ion concentration is approximately 7.9 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter. Okay, so before I let you guys go and work on your assignment, I just want to do page 46, number 11. So, a plastic sun visor allows a light to pass through, but reduces the intensity of the lights. The intensity is reduced by 5% if the plastic is one millimeter thick. Each additional millimeter of thickness reduces the intensity by another 5%. So if we have 5% blocked, this means that 95% remains, okay? So if we have one layer, we have 95% visibility. If we have two layers, we have 0.95 time 0.95 visibility and if we have three layers 
we have 0 0.95 to 3 visibility. Now we can just come up with an expression based off of this. So the thickness intensity, so Ti, is equal to 0 0.95 to the power of x. And now we can use this expression to help us solve question B. So question B is asking, how thick is a piece of plastic that reduces the intensity of the light to 60%? <clears throat> so the thickness intensity is 60%. So that's our Ti, 0 0.6, is equal to 0 0.95 to the power of x. And now what we learned from, I think, two or three lessons ago, we can just add log to both of our sides. So we get log of 0 0.6 is equal to log of 0 0.95 to the x. And based off our power rule, we can just do log of 0 0.6 is equal to x times log of 0 0.95. And then it is pretty easy to isolate for x after this. So we get x is equal to log 0 0.6 divided by log of 0 0.95. And who can tell me what log of 0 0.6 divided by log of 0 0.95 gives us? which gives us x is equal to 9.96, which means that, <clears throat> which means that the, the piece of plastic is 9.96 millimeters thick. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully, uh, that answers the question to whoever asked this, okay? And now what I want you guys to do is take the rest of the time in class to work on your assignment.